gonna take on this gentleman here with some uh, with some chess. Right. CSKill, thank you, sir. Getting the table here. Thank you, sir. Yes, nice one. This one, yeah. yeah clever, clever, clever. Yeah. What's your name again? Huh? Your name? B. Vili. You? Rahindi. Rahindi. Nice to meet you, sir. Yeah. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. Yes. <laughs> bye bye. Hello, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Beautiful sunny day. Very much part of the old town of Tbilisi and of course here the sulfuric hot springs or the hot baths was what inspired King Vaktang to build Tbilisi here and over here you will see some more of them but first I want to show you all these colorful love locks over here so lots of love in Tbilisi that's been immortalized here and there you can see these brick dome baths that uh, have existed for many, many years. And there is a stream or a river flowing to the bigger river, the Kura on the other side of the street. But people used to use this stream for washing. And more of a wooden balconies here in Tbilisi. Now I've been told, I'm not sure how accurate this is, but apparently the reason that they are seemingly so separate from the buildings is because they were newer additions. There was a problem with circulation at one stage. And so hence why you have the wooden balconies attached to the older buildings. Yeah, so far I've really enjoyed Tbilisi. I've struggled a little bit to orientate myself, if I'm honest. It's not the easiest city to navigate on foot. But once you start getting the hang of it, which, uh, which I think I'm starting to get, it's actually a very enjoyable experience. And on this side, you can see here on the cliff top, there's a statue of King Vaktang Gorgasali. He's also on the 20 Larry note in the back, and who inspired to build the capital here of his kingdom in the year 458 and the reason Tbilisi basically exists today thanks to that man there the plan for now is just to go and get something to eat so uh, let's see what we can find I've been told this is a nice place to come and have some Kinkali which is over there the Georgian dumpling so Let's give it a shot. Yeah, check this out, guys. So this is the name of the restaurant. And I think it's a Georgian word. And the explanation is, you are so full that you can not eat anymore. But you are eating anyway because it's so effing delicious. Well, let's, uh, let's give it a shot. So I think I'm going to order some of the Kinkali there. You can see one Larry 90 per dumpling or that, that's for the meat and the cheese ones and I think maybe I'll try some potato ones as well. The meat is a traditional Georgian dumpling, the kinkali. So this is the potato, that's the cheese and the two meat. I've been told that you should not use a knife and fork, you should use your hands only. That's because there's a soup, a liquid inside that might spill if you, uh, if you use a knife and fork. So let's start first with one of the meat ones. It's a bit like starting with a main course rather than an appetizer, but I bought two, so I'll finish off with a meat one as well. Very nice there, you can see. Hi, sorry, what, what meat is this? Do you know? 
Which meat? Is it pork? Yeah. Oh, pork one and stuff. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much. Here goes a potato. Potato and dough. Mm. I quite like this. Got a nice texture. Nice flavor as well. It's almost like a mash inside. It tastes like mash. Right time for the cheese one. There it goes. Mm. Oh gosh, yeah, I like the cheese. Yeah, so they are very liberal with their cheese offering. And uh, yeah, very nice. Yeah, so for me it's hard to compare because the only other type of dumpling I think I've tried before is a pierogi in Poland. And I certainly think the portions here in Georgia seem to be bigger at least. Um, maybe, uh, maybe if you live in Poland and you have uh, eat this more regularly than I do, then you might disagree. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think of it. This is an iconic Georgian dish. You have to try it when you're in Tbilisi or anywhere else in Georgia. See, I'm doing better with this one. I bit it so that the liquid didn't spill. I'm becoming a Kinkali master here. Right, guys, so stomach filled. So let's go and explore a little bit more here of Tbilisi. There's more of the old town, a real eclectic mix of architecture. And one of the quieter streets here in the old town. See carpets for sale. Tours in Georgia, there's the mother of Georgia. Loads of wine bars around. Cable car operation. Here we have an interesting sculpture. Someone drinking wine. I think it's called Tamuda. Tamada. A bronze sculpture. Well, the copy. Dated 7th century BC. Discovered in Varni, Western Georgia. Yeah. Enjoying a bit of a Georgian wine. And yeah, it's hard to miss the... Uh, Georgian wine signs and advertisements here in Tbilisi. It's everywhere. Hello. Hello, guys. And yeah, wine, of course, but you also have lots of fruit bars and smoothie bars around. You can see there, again, glass of wine and lots of carpets for sale here. So, Tbilisi was also like a local hub of the carpets. Local and Middle Eastern. In 17th century, we had also gobelins transported from the Europe and then sending to the Asia or some local kings or like wealthy people would keep them here so it was like this but what we mostly had was local and Middle Eastern carpets yeah so according to these two carpets so let's call it blue let's call it red there are many colors but I mean like, let's do like this so which one is Georgian red or blue red. so the, the red one is so firstly the ornaments. In Georgian culture, we don't have rounded ornaments. Everything is square or, or like a, with like a, with the edges. Yeah, edgy. Yeah, uh, like tribal. So, and this is a Persian style. They are Middle Eastern style. Yeah, roses and so forth. Yeah. Plus, the technique, the technology, it's also different. Why? Because the function is different. Because the material is different. This is wool and this is silk. Yeah, then you could turn it back. So, it is, it's, it, you see, it's different yeah, from the side and from the side. Yeah, because this is Islamic uh, part of the Islamic culture rather than decoration to pray on the carpet. Yeah, yes. In the Christian culture, we don't have this. So that is why these colors had to be. Uh, I mean, these uh, carpets had to be fluffy. That's why it made like this. So this frame threads these are called frame threads that are stretched and these are the color threads that go you know like this and when they are shaved it's called like this when they cut it so you'll get the sense of velvet yeah so it was like this so the car of course the better would be the carpet the higher rank people would have them one was the wealth the second was this function of religious element yes the same was in Georgia as well but we would make it in the wool but 
religion's function it never had. It was decoration, statues, or temperature to warm. Yeah, because the wool is warmer material rather than silk. And what we have to know about the wool? Wool is usually harvested in, like made in the mountainous regions of Georgia. What we have to know about mountainous regions of Georgia is that they converted in Christianity much later than the cities in 14th and 15th century, which means that these ornaments are pre-Christian. Yeah, so this pre-Christian civilization remains now only on the carpets. Yeah, so this paganist culture. Yeah, and there, that's why there are still some villages in Georgia in the northern mountains. Yeah, where they make carpets with some praying. But now they say some Christian prayers, but it's tradition to pray when you do this. Yeah, to put your like a sacred words in this. Yeah, it's typical paganist culture. Art is not a thing, it is a way. Frida Kahlo enjoying some wine or actually producing it. Yeah, there's a big Frida Kahlo theme here in Tbilisi. Wonder what that's about. I seem to love Frida Kahlo. This dog is no worry in the world. Some more wine bars, they're really hard to miss actually. Oh, look at this interesting table, wooden with a few tiles. Yeah, you can see more of a wooden balconies. There's a few more things that I think I want to see just before the day finishes. I want to go to a flea market. I believe it's on one of the bridges uh, here in Tbilisi. So an old sort of flea market that you can buy a lot of interesting things, including stuff from like the Soviet era. And this is where the locals shop. And then also, if we can get to it, see some parks. Or maybe walk through some local parks towards the flea market and then i also want to do some shopping at the supermarket maybe get something nice to eat there right guys back in the center of tbilisi hoping to get to the flea market so let's see what that holds in the meantime there will be some interesting stuff for us to see as well just want to cross the street somewhere the flea market is on the other side of the road or at least the way to the flea market is on the other side of the road so I have to find an underpass and one thing I've immediately noticed of Tbilisi is how difficult it is to cross the road there's not many places that allow for it and wide roads of course very sort of Soviet feel to it but also wide pedestrian walkway so at least we have a bit of space to walk although it does have a bit of a rush hour feel to it at the moment what do you think of Rustavili Avenue the major thoroughfare here in Tbilisi major avenue I quite like it like I said I like the spacious pavement or walkway very interesting buildings some very imposing buildings in part as well and lots of green as well beautiful trees yeah let's go down the underground passage here a lot of these underground passages have got lots of shops and newsstands and you can buy anything from shoes to books some things to eat. So lots of shoes, even some lemon for sale. A Georgian flag and some ice cream. Right, we made it to the other side of the, uh, the road. Look at some of the beautiful churches. Very orthodox style churches, of course. Eastern Orthodox. Here in Georgia. And I'm loving all these parks and green spaces in Tbilisi. 
immediately feel a little bit more relaxed as well. And uh, no idea who that is, unfortunately. That's the uh, only thing I'm struggling with at the moment is to find information about the city on the streets. So there's not a lot of it around. So I'm kind of have to rely on maps and brochures and the odd bit of information here and there. It's actually a very difficult city to walk around. But nonetheless, if you are willing to walk, you will be rewarded with some very interesting things to see. But make sure you have a good pair of shoes, a full bottle of water, and you should be fine. Nine April Garden. The former Alexander Garden was designed in 1859 by the local German architect Otto Jakob Simonsen. There you go, a bit of information. Or if you prefer Georgian, there's your information for you. Yeah, I particularly like this statue here. Obviously, no information in English for us there, but still nice to look at. There's another bust of someone. Notice how clean it is as well here in Tbilisi. And yeah, it's crazy to think that Rustabeli Avenue is literally just behind here. So the busiest street here in Tbilisi. And this feels like a world apart. So whoever designed the town back in the day, I think has done a very good job. So a noise cancelling park, that is for sure. In fact, it adds noises of nature like the birds. And you can only just about make out or hear the traffic in the background. Yes, certainly a more relaxed vibe in this part of the city. And wow, look at that, free of charge toilets. So there's a handy tip if you're in Tbilisi, because uh, many of the toilets I've seen in the city center actually charge you money. So if you're willing to hold out, or hold in rather, there are free places. And down here, some more street musicians. Wow, what a nice relaxing spot this is see people from all age groups relaxing and enjoying this beautiful park and others hard at work here you have a statue of Mihaly Zichi not sure how you pronounce it but some Hungarian artist illustrator of a knight in the panthers skin by Shota Rustabeli I've realized today or on this walk that Green spaces are very much central to the Tbilisi way of life. And why not? Because it's absolutely beautiful. And remember that we're only in spring, so in summer, this must be an off the charts experience. We'll probably have to come back and experience this in summer in full glory. So not just green spaces, but also a bit of color. It's another conspicuous statue here. Conspicuous statues, also interesting park lights, street lights, and big, big stone monument. Here is a very imposing statue. It looks very Soviet as well. <coughs> Some angry stray dogs. Who is this? Georgi Leonidze. Some sort of musician, I guess. And on the side of the park, you've got more souvenir shops. So, Spar, Spa is actually a very, very popular convenience store or supermarket here in Tbilisi. Also very prominent in South Africa. So that is something familiar. 
That souvenir shop, on the other hand, will be unfamiliar. Just crossing the road here and you got some more books and children's books, colouring books for sale. So it's around 4 o'clock. I believe the flea market finishes at 5. So we should still have some things to look at. Here you can see cassettes, wow, and CDs. Don't think I've seen cassettes for a very long time. I've seen CDs, they're quite prominent in like the charity shops in England, but cassettes are definitely out of favor. Yeah, wow, here you've got everything from Russian dolls and cameras, cutlery, quite a variety of stuff here. Carpets and coins. some copper stuff number plates and the prize item is that gas masks wow yeah when uh, when people said i should come here i didn't know there was going to be such a variety of stuff but there's definitely a lot of stuff to see here you can go luxury shopping in any part of the world including tbilisi the shopping mall which is quite luxurious but this is very local this has got a really really good local feel to it and lots of cameras over here and let's not forget there are stuff on the other side of the road as well chess boards and kettles and kitchenware <laughs> there are maps and books. And it just goes on and on, so certainly a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. And at the same time, we'll get a nice view of a river. If you uh, need to spruce up your kitchen, you know where to come. But check this out. The River Kura here in Tbilisi. And on the other side as well. But as per usual, it will be very difficult to cross. So we just have to find a way there and uh, you can see how much traffic there is in the city as well at this time because people would have finished work Yo, there's no way to cross the road really so this is something I will definitely remember of Tbilisi and it takes a while to get used to finally a place I can cross sorry sir well, we're not keen on stopping though Here's a public service hall. Very interesting building. Looks like various offices built in a particular shape. Almost looks like they will fall down, but they won't. So, and a very modern looking bridge across the road. And look, pedestrian crossing. Fantastic. I am never going to take a pedestrian crossing for granted again, let me tell you. Yeah, guys, just taking another break here. Outside the supermarket. Where I bought this dessert. So, custard with strawberry. Looks pretty nice. And only two Larry 90. So, let's give it a bit of a taste. Looks nice and very sweet, yeah. Here it goes. Mm. The custard is nice and thick. Very nice and sweet and huge bargain. So 
there you can see mm. the lesson is a supermarket is your friend when you go traveling and if you really want to take budget traveling even further i've got a free spoon here you never know when a small spoon comes in handy let me tell you in fact i just had an idea i'm going to take this spoon with me on my travels from now on certainly going to take it to my next destination will fit in nicely in my backpack we're going to have some adventures together you must think i'm absolutely crazy but yeah crazy or not i am your designated guide to tbilisi today so let's continue our adventure another local market here here's the supermarket i just bought my dessert from So two Larry 90 for a dessert and a spoon that I'm going to take on my travels. Ain't that a bargain. See, even he's, he's happy for me. Not all, but some of the street signs have got beautiful tiles. Adding a really good artistic touch to the city. Tbilisi certainly gets 10 out of 10 from me in relation to statues. And check out this very interesting bridge. It's called the Peace Bridge. And look at how modern it looks. It feels a bit like walking in a movie or into a movie. Very futuristic bridge here. The Peace Bridge. And the River Kura. With some very interesting buildings of course churches all around which you can see and that is the remains of a castle we saw in another vlog and the mother of georgia and if you like traffic spotting this is a place to do it as well i love tbilisi the instagram hotspot of the city all these stands selling fresh fruit so people or tourists living a healthy lifestyle here in Tbilisi I think by missing a trick because I buy my stuff at the supermarket some of the delights of Tbilisi Americano smoothies sandwiches and bowl whatever that means lost in translation I've struggled a bit with the language I'm not gonna lie not many people speak English, not even many young people in my experience, so I had far less issues in Azerbaijan. So keep that in mind if you come to this part of the world. Might be useful bringing a Russian phrase book or something, or at least know some basic Russian. Or if you want to be anonymous like me, just bring yourself and your backpack and your enthusiasm. There's a Baskin Robbins, but the Georgian version of it. I have absolutely no idea what that means. Oh, it's half a car. There's a little bit of a flashback to Azerbaijan, Haydar Aliyev. So they got a park here named after him here as well. This is the most interesting map of Tbilisi I've ever seen in my life. You can see that's the entrance to one of the royal baths. And here are a couple from a closer angle. And more brilliant architecture you can see there the backdrop of the, the rocks there and over there as well with a church the buildings here with their wooden balconies so yeah really enjoy it here in Tbilisi very nice place to visit All right, guys, as the sun sets here in beautiful Tbilisi, I think this is where I'll end my vlog. So let's recap. What did we see? Well, we walked through some parks. We saw some interesting architecture. We walked along a flea market. You saw me eat a dessert with a spoon that I will now take on my travels. We saw the hot springs here in the old town and lots more. If you haven't done it yet, Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for watching my videos, guys. I'll see you again soon.